The PlayStation 3 released back in 2006, and compared to the success of other PlayStations, the PS3 didn't really get the right start for many reasons, mainly due to the high price tag and cell CPU which made it a real pain to develop for, with its competitor the Xbox 360 being the preferred choice as it was much easier to develop for. With the success of the Wii also hurting the PS3 during its early life, it's the perfect example of how you can't rely on a brand to guarantee you success, even with brands as big as PlayStation. The PlayStation 3 did do the unthinkable, turning its fate completely around from the depths of failure to the heights of success, even leading it to outsell its closest competitor, the Xbox 360, which would have seemed almost impossible from its early days. So how exactly did Sony manage to turn around the PlayStation 3 from failure and allow the brand to rebuild itself with the PlayStation 4's release? The PS3 notably introduced features such as PSN, the PlayStation Store, and a massive library of iconic titles, so what would have happened to the PlayStation brand if the PS3 failed? So in today's sort of retrospective video, we're going to look into how Sony saved the PS3. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Before we look into how Sony fixed the PS3, we need to look at how the PS3 failed in the first place, because it'd be kind of a bit ridiculous if we didn't look at that first. In 2001, Sony had just come out with the ridiculously successful PS2, and were ready to start developing the next PlayStation. Ken Kutaragi, the then CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, most notably for being the father of PlayStation, announced that Sony, Toshiba, and IBM would enter a partnership to develop the Cell CPU. A partnership with a goal to create a ridiculously powerful CPU, with it being announced at E3 2004. Sony from the beginning wanted to use Cell for the upcoming PlayStation 3, and use it in other future products as well. Although Toshiba and IBM wanted to invest Cell into scientific research, TVs, and more. Due to its power, with Cell's development lasting for four years. And by early 2005, when Cell was ready, Sony began development on the PS3's launch titles. Early that same year, Microsoft had already announced the Xbox 360, the coming to market later that year. Although at that point, Sony didn't really consider Microsoft as a threat due to the reliability of the PlayStation brand. E3 2005 came and went, and Sony officially revealed the concept for PS3. Sony showcased PlayStation 3's power and features during the two-hour event, such as Blu-ray and the Cell CPU, with some tech demos being shown as well. Sony also emphasised the point that PS3 would be an entertainment device for the whole family, and would be backwards compatible with PS1 and PS2 titles. Different studios at the event also showed sneak peeks for upcoming PS3 launch titles. The early concept design for the console, which was on show at E3, was a silver console almost identical to the final fat PS3 by having two HDMI ports, six USB ports, SD card slots, and three Ethernet ports. Yeah, a bit of a stretch for a console. PS3 would also feature a built-in hard drive, and the GPU was developed alongside Nvidia, known as the RSX. The concept for the controller was also a boomerang-shaped design, with the PS3 release date being revealed, aiming to release in spring 2006. Meanwhile, Microsoft, on the other hand, announced that the Xbox 360 would launch in late 2005, giving them a head start. During this time, Sony began handing out PS3 development kits to major studios, and this is where the PS3's issues began to appear. The complex cell CPU of the PS3 was very hard to work with. Developers struggled to get games working on the system with the CPU, because of how it was not designed to be used in the game console, with it being more of like a supercomputer style CPU. A lack of support from Sony to some developers really didn't help either of the new hardware. This led some developers to develop for the Xbox 360 instead, as it was already out, and it had a more traditional power PC CPU, which was easier to work with. E3 2006 was the next time we got to look at PS3. At this event, we got to look at some of the PS3's launch titles, which are actually playing on a console this time instead of being pre-rendered in E3 2005. Sony also made some adjustments to the PS3's design, removing some USB, HDMI and Ethernet ports, making it much closer, in fact identical to the final design. With the controller reverting back to the traditional DualShock design, also now being called 6-axis, and lacking rumble functionality due to an ongoing legal battle Sony had at the time, we also got a detailed look at PS3 specifications. E3 2006, however, was filled with odd presentations, awkward moments, and much more, making it notorious on the internet to this day. 
Titles coming to the PlayStation 3 were also revealed and looked much closer to their vinyl versions, such as Gran Turismo HD, Final Fantasy XIII and Battle Gear Solid 4, which all looked very promising until the console's retail price was announced. PS3 would cost $499 for the 20GB version and $599 for the 60GB version, which compared to the $299 price tag of the Xbox 360, was very expensive for a console, leading some people to bite the bullet and purchase Xboxes. If the console releasing on November 17th for North America, however, due to the console's power and cost to manufacture, Sony were losing almost $200 per every PS3 sold, and the fact they spent $40 million on investing in sell, PS3 was already looking to be very uncertain. The fact the console was also releasing one year later than the Xbox 360 was also a major blow for Sony, as that console was doing exceptionally well. The introduction of Nintendo's console, the Wii, and hype regarding that console was also a threat to Sony. Ken Kutaragi, however, saw no threat to the PS3. He thought the PlayStation brand would guarantee sales for the console, no matter the price. Kutaragi also knew that the PS3 would be his last PlayStation console he would help develop, and treated it as one last hurrah. One thing was for certain at this point, fans knew a disaster was inbound. PS3's launch came in November 2006 in Japan and North America, and due to a shortage of consoles, the system's European launch was delayed until March 2007. Lots of violent crimes regarding the PS3's launch, mainly in North America due to lots of people not getting their hands on the console, was becoming a problem. The shortage and amount of people wanting a console saw it selling for very high prices on eBay, with someone even buying the console for $10,000. The launch wasn't really how Sony wanted it to go. General reviews for the PS3 were mixed to poor, with many reviewers criticising the console's high price and lack of return. Highly anticipated features such as the PS Store and PSM were a disappointment to say the least, with the store just being a web page and not a built-in app. You couldn't also download games in the background, you had to be on the store downloading them. The PS3's XMB was also lacking a lot of features at the time of launch, with most of its launch titles also being disappointing. Shortly after launch, Ken Kutaragi stepped down as head of Sony Computer Entertainment, as he accepted a new position at Sony itself, although retired a year later and became a chairman of the company. With 2007 now being underway, the PS3's issues really began to settle in, with many developers choosing to prioritise game development of the Xbox 360, as it was selling very well and was much easier to develop for compared to PS3 with games then being ported to PS3, leading most titles to perform better on 360, despite the PS3's capabilities. The issue was that developers could not take advantage of the Cell CPU's power, due to just how complex it was. You see, Cell CPUs were meant for use in powerful computers, like scientific and medical equipment, and weren't really meant for game consoles. Some people also bought multiple PS3s to put them together and form a supercomputer, thanks to it having the ability to run Linux. Sony, however, did not seem to care too much at this point, as they thought people would still buy PS3 no matter what, even if it had a high price or had a lack of third-party titles. And from that aspect, they were very wrong. Other issues were starting to settle in, such as the notorious yellow light of death, although Microsoft are hit much harder with this type of hardware issue, with the 360's red ring of death. Now, this part of the PS3's early days was where it hit rock bottom, Sony Computer Entertainment were looking for a way to get out of this disaster. The system wasn't selling well compared to its competition, meaning Sony couldn't make much profit from PS3 due to the amount of money being lost to manufacturing the consoles. Developers also didn't want to develop for it, as it was very hard to develop for and just wasn't selling well. The PS3's reputation as well as PlayStation as a whole was pretty much shattered at this point. It would have thought to be an impossible task to turn this situation around, but Sony somehow did. Sony was scrambling to find a way out of this situation and start heavily competing with the Xbox 360, and this is where some much needed changes began to occur. First, Sony discontinued the 20GB version of the PlayStation 3 and lowered the price of the 60GB model, as well as introducing an 80GB model, which included PlayStation 2 emulation. Although the 80GB model was discontinued in favour of a 40GB model lacking PlayStation 2 backwards compatibility. SD card slots were removed from the console, as well as removing some USB ports to cut some costs. The 6-axis controller was discontinued, with the DualShock 3 shipping with new consoles, which featured rumble functionality and had an almost identical design. Many updates delivering much needed features were released, and quality exclusives started coming to the PlayStation 3, cementing itself as a solid platform, 
and gain PlayStation some more positive publicity after the issues it had at launch. Although Sony was still manufacturing PlayStation 3s at a loss, and was still not selling enough units to make it profitable, Sony's plans to use Cell in all of their future products also fell through at this point, with PlayStation 3 being the only Cell product Sony produced. 2008 saw Sony have a major analysis on the PS3's launch, and determined what went wrong and how they can get PlayStation back on track. Mark Kearney would also get involved with PlayStation around this time, and early work began on PS4's development. However, before Sony could think about anything related to the PlayStation 4, they had to fix the PlayStation 3. Sony first decided to reboot the PS3 and give it a new sense of life, with more exclusive titles coming to the platform, such as the groundbreaking Little Big Planet and PlayStation Home. Microsoft, on the other hand, were pushing the 360 more than ever, with Halo 3 being released, along with Final Fantasy XIII and GTA 4. E3 2009 came and went, where both sides revealed their motion control accessories to compete with the Wii. Microsoft announcing Project Natal, later becoming Kinect, and Sony revealing PlayStation Move. Notably at this point of the generation, Sony were doing everything they can to continue selling the PlayStation 3 at its current state, and Microsoft were trying to keep their lead. Gamescom 2009, though, was where Sony completely rebranded the PS3, revealing a new logo similar to the PlayStation 2 logo, and revealed a brand new design for the PlayStation 3, known as the PlayStation 3 Slim, which was cheaper to manufacture and had a much more affordable price, being priced at $299. Sony also rolled out a massive marketing campaign to promote PS3, featuring Kevin Butler, a fake PlayStation executive, which ended up doing very well for Sony. Sony at this point were doing everything they could to get PlayStation back at the top, as in an earnings report in 2009, they reported that PS3 had accumulated a $654 million loss in the games and network division, bringing the total money lost to PS3 to over $4.7 billion. PlayStation Move finally released in 2009, although it did nowhere near as well as the Kinect. More and more developers at this point were getting to grips with the PS3's hardware, as Sony was offering more support, with PlayStation 3's exclusive lineup beginning to grow with some amazing titles, which is becoming a bigger and bigger threat for Microsoft. IBM also announced that same year that they were parting ways of Cell, although the features of Cell were moved to future products. The Cell CPU was pretty much dead at this point. 2010 saw the PS3's lineup continue to grow and chase Microsoft. Finally, things were looking up for PlayStation, although that same year, Sony removed the ability to run custom OS's on the original PS3, such as Linux, in a firmware update. Sony after this faced a lot of backlash from the Linux community, and saw them have multiple legal filings put against them, for pretty much just removing an advertised feature. This pretty much stopped the ability from new PS3 supercomputers to be formed. Sony were finally fighting for top spot once again. Microsoft, however, kept improving the 360 as well, with the much-needed 360 redesign being revealed in 2011, known as the 360S. The Kinect's success also gave Sony much more work to do catching up with Microsoft. Over time, though, the reputation of the PS3 continued to improve significantly. Once being a console plagued with issues such as the high price and lack of third-party titles, now it was thriving with exclusives and new third-party titles being released, with developers finally getting to grips with Cell. Microsoft, though, stopped focusing on delivering as many exclusives, and would instead start focusing on the Kinect more, making PS3 a much more robust choice for core gamers. With the exclusives becoming better, and new games performing better on PS3, such as Portal 2, all was looking good for Sony. 2011, though, saw the infamous PSN intrusion or hack occur. Sony shut down PSN for 23 days, while Sony worked on repairing the network, with many bank cards and personal information being compromised, although not confirmed. The hack costed Sony $171 million to repair the damages. Although it's not confirmed who was behind the hack or why it happened, it's believed to be linked to Sony removing custom OS support from PS3. The backlash and media speculation regarding this event affected PS3's sales, coming at the console's most vulnerable time. Despite this, Sony recovered really well, and issued a public apology. Sony also gave players a welcome backpacks when the rebuilt network launched, with free games and exclusive offers, as compensation for the downtime. Kesarai in 2012, who was the man responsible for rebuilding PS3, left his position as Sony Computer Entertainment Head to become the CEO and President of Sony after his efforts on rebooting the PS3. 2012 also saw a new cheaper version of the PS3 launch, known as the Super Slim. With PS3 selling better and better as the months went by, January 2013, however, saw the moment Sony wanted to achieve with PS3. 
After all the mistakes and issues the console had at the beginning, all the work putting PS3 back on the map, despite minor blips, would finally pay off, as Sony officially overtook Microsoft in total sales. Although Sony actually overtook Microsoft in May, with the PlayStation 4 being announced around the same time, and the rest is history, or possibly for a future video. Sony the underdog had finally beaten their nearest competitor, despite the minor missteps at the beginning. With the help of thousands of people, PS3 managed to recover and become a solid console for a massive library of great games. Looking at PS3's early games and comparing them to some of the consoles last, it's amazing to see how developers have indeed managed to utilise the cell CPU to its full potential. Despite it not being really designed to be used with a games console, maybe if PS3 launched in line with the Xbox 360 and didn't have all its issues and was priced at an affordable level, who knows what the console could have achieved. Despite the downsides, PS3 had many defining features, such as the Blu-ray drive, a hard drive, and lots of multimedia capabilities, which was much superior compared to the 360, as that console used DVDs still. PS3 is the perfect example of how you can sometimes be too ambitious without thinking about developers that are actually developing games for the console itself. It showed that with the help of the community and developers, Sony could put PS3 back on track and beat Microsoft, arguably saving the brand. PS3 is such an iconic console and is really a defining part of the seventh generation of consoles, being Ken Kutaragi's last PlayStation he would develop. A final goodbye, if you will. It's just incredible to see how everyone chipped in and helped Sony transform the PS3 into a massive platform, which is what people wanted it originally to be. Despite its issues, PS3 was on the market from 2006 to 2017, sold 87.4 million units, outselling their Xbox 360's 85 million. PS3 will forever be remembered as how Sony managed to completely turn around the sinking ship and climb back onto their throne, excluding the Wii's success of course, although that's a topic for another video. PS3 without a doubt deserves its place as one of the most iconic consoles of all time. Now that you know how Sony saved the PS3, I think it's time to end this video. As always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more gaming content like this. Make sure to check out my Instagram, Twitter and Discord server, links to all are in the description. What memories do you have with the PS3? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.